dust and ashes choke our tongue in the wasteland of depression. Holy Spirit, come, walk with us tomorrow through all gloom and grieving to the paths of resurrection. Take us by the hand and lead us, lead us through the desert sands. Bring us living water, Holy Spirit, come. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the peace and grace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Gathered together as God's holy people, we humbly acknowledge our need for God's love and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared fitting helps for us in our weakness, grant, we pray, that we may rejoice their healing effects with joy and reflect them in a holy way of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. From the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say among themselves, thinking not aright, let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of training. He professes to have knowledge of God and styles himself a child of the Lord. To us he is the censure of our thoughts. Merely to see him is a hardship for us, because his life is not like that of others, and different are his ways. He judges us debased, and holds aloof from our paths as from things impure. He calls blessed the destiny of the just and boasts that God is his father. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the son of God, he will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put to the test that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. These were their thoughts, but they erred, for their wickedness blinded them, and they knew not the hidden counsels of God. Neither did they count on a recompense of holiness, nor discern the innocent soul's reward. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord confronts evildoers to destroy remnants of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears him, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and to those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He watches over all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus moved about within Galilee. He did not wish to travel in Judea because the Jews were trying to kill him. But the Jewish feast of tabernacles was near. But when his brothers had gone up to their feast, he himself also went up, not openly, but as it were in secret. Some of the inhabitants of Jerusalem said, Is he not the one they are trying to kill? And look, he is speaking openly, and they say nothing to him. Could he... Could the authorities have realized that he is the Christ? But we know where he is from. When the Christ comes, no one will know where he is from. So Jesus cried out in the temple area as he was teaching and said, You know me and also know where I am from. Yet I did not come on my own, but the one who sent me, whom you do not know, is true. I know him because I am from him and he sent me. So they tried to arrest him, but no one laid a hand upon him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I try to imagine you out there, wherever you are, in the positions that you sit in the smaller chapel, because everybody likes the same seat every day, so I look around and see the crowd around me even though no one is here. At some point, 
Most of us have had wicked thoughts. When angry, frustrated, or confused, but by the grace of God, maybe we don't act on it. In the Book of Wisdom, however, these wicked thoughts are towards someone who sees through falsity and insincerity. The wicked are angry because someone has the gall to call them out on their bad behavior and seeks to destroy the truth teller. And let's face reality. We have thousands of years of evidence that people can be cruel, blinded by their own agenda, corrupted by greed, brainwashed by their group, power grabbing or ego, all weaknesses masquerading as strength. And this is why a savior comes among us. In the Gospel of John, the Christ has become fully aware of the cruelty people are capable of. When they have not been redeemed, when their lives have, not, have been so harsh that that is all they know. When they have been corrupted by lies, prejudice, and ignorance. While we are called by Christ to be compassionate toward the ignorant, the haters, the desperate, and the insane, we must also protect ourselves from their influence, safeguarding our hearts from darkness. Christ entered into a chaotic world and lived here just like we do. The Christ saw it all and remained sane, rational, spiritually attuned, and free of sin. He brought healing to the sick of mind and body. And like his mother Mary, he pondered all things in his heart. He did not live by assumptions. He did not make unfounded evaluations. He saw through pretense to true intentions. And most of the messed up people of this world were messed up by someone else in a cycle of dysfunction. And while we must be patient and calm, compassionate and just, there is a line we sometimes must draw. As a positive thinking person, this is not easy for me. I want to trust people freely, but I have seen what people are capable of, cruelty in the name of righteousness some people have exacted upon others. The mob mentality of hate and blame will finally arrest Jesus and have him publicly executed. The viciousness of humanity will be on full display. But at the same time, in direct contrast, something humanity needs desperately will also be on first display at that hour. God's expansive desire for our redemption. With every prayer we offer, with every act of goodwill, with every Eucharist we share, the promise of God's redeeming love comes among us once again. Let us offer the prayers of the church. For the body of Christ, stretched across the continents of our earthly home, a sign of God's love, and for the spiritual leadership of Pope Francis and our bishops, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the leadership and believers of all Christians everywhere, 
bound to us by the saving power of the cross, we pray to the Lord. For the people of goodwill of all religions, we pray to the Lord. For the world, as we together take on one of the greatest threats in the history of humankind, we pray to the Lord. For the hypocrites, sinners, liars, that they may be touched and reborn by the healing power of Christ, we pray to the Lord. For all gathered here for this Mass, those physically present, those supporting this broadcast faithfully each day here at Transfiguration, and for those participating online, we pray to the Lord. For the repose of the soul of Robert Broderick and Matthew Wynne Hu Tan, we pray to the Lord. For those who mourn and for all who have requested our prayers, we pray to the Lord. And for the prayers of our hearts, which we now utter before the Lord's abundant mercy. Good and gracious God, we lift up these prayers to you in faith. We ask that you hear them and grant them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this hour sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, Almighty God, cleanse us by its mighty power and lead us to approach its source with ever greater purity. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful awaits the sacred Paschal feasts. With joy of minds made pure so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and by participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing forever the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Zabak in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Zabak. 
You are holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life, this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joel, our Bishop Administrator, Bernard, our Auxiliary Bishop, Archbishop-elect Gregory Hartmeyer, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who had fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And together we pray as the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day and in your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. We share with one another a sign of peace. Take away the 
sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worried that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you who are viewing Mass online, please join with me in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite me myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. You are the potter, we are the clay. You are the shepherd guiding the way. You are the star that brightens our night, leading us home. Leading us home And when the raging storms will rise Trembling within our boats we hide In our doubt and fear You hold us ever near you are the potter, we are the clay. You are the shepherd guiding the way. You are the star that brightens our night, leading us home. Leading us home. Leading us home. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we pass from old to new, so with former ways left behind, we may be renewed in holiness of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended. Let us go in peace.